He's announced that he's coming back for his uh, 14th season. And you're looking clean here. I mean, you look like an all pro with the way you dressed here. Man. Well, thank you, Mr. Patrick. I appreciate it. Uh, at, there was drama leading up to this decision. At least it felt like. Was there drama in your world of coming back for another year? No, there wasn't any drama. I just wanted to make sure I was making the decision, um, you know, without rushing it. Um, you know, I'd still have a burning desire to compete. You know, I, I realized that just watching the playoff games after the season. Um, you know, I was like, man, look, look at Julio and Antonio Brown and these guys out here making these plays. I still I still want to be able to compete. And, um, you know, after the season, you know, finishing seven, eight and one, you know, falling far, far short of our goals preseason and, um, you know, not living up to expectations. It really something I didn't I didn't want to go out like that. Don't take this the wrong way, but you always struck me as somebody who would retire earlier because you have other interests. Yes. You love to travel like I would have seen you as a Calvin Johnson saying I said I'm done mm -hmm. uh, uh, or you know Pat McAfee just walked away at age 29. Yeah. Um, but you have these interests but foot but like there's something that's pulling you back though with football. I mean is it unfinished business here. Well you have a lot of vast interests but uh, you know I started this um, I've always wanted to be a champion It's something that you can pee for you work so so hard like that desire just you just can't turn that off. It doesn't wake up one day and say oh, I have no desire to win a Super Bowl anymore. If you, know, you like, had a Super Bowl win. Would you I'd be a completely different story. What? Completely you wouldn't different. be back? Uh, I, most likely, no. It's that important. Oh, it's, it's that important, yeah. What was? How long does it take to get over that loss? Because I asked Michael Bennett this, and he said, oh, I'm a football player. I, I, it was done when I was done with the game. Well, it's easy for Michael to say because he has a, <laughs> he has a, he has a Super Bowl ring too, though. Yeah. You know, when you don't have any hardware, you know, it's completely different. You're going for your second one and you lose. It's it's not the thing is not as bad. If I said if we held receivers accountable the way we do quarterbacks, or running backs hold them accountable the way we do quarterbacks, you have to have Super Bowl rings mm -hmm. to measure greatness. Would would that be fair? If, if I said you know hey you don't have a Super Bowl ring because we do this with quarterback Dan mm -hmm. Marino doesn't have one therefore yes. he can't be considered the greatest for some reason he didn't have a, a, a how much would that be fair I know you're not holding the ball as a quarterback is mm -hmm. with every play but well, uh, how do you think we would rate uh, wide receivers if we based it on success in well, the Super Bowl that, that would be difficult to do because you know we don't have the the ability to impact the game the same way a quarterback does or even a running back does he's touching the ball as much but you know, a guy like Jerry Rice, who's, you know, won multiple Super Bowls and, and played in the biggest moments and and Lynn, Lynn, Lynn Swan and John Stallworth and guys like that, um, you know, who, who played and won multiple Super Bowls. You, know, you, you got to look at them in a different light because the plays they were able to make on that stage under that pressure was just better than anybody else. But you made one of those plays against the Steelers. Yes. That the, was going to be the, the one moment. play that I, I that I needed to make. I didn't make in that game. I needed to tackle James Harrison before he got to the end zone. And that's the play that I needed to make that I did not make. You know, does it bother you? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, when I hit James Harrison, I felt like I was tackling his desk right here. You know, <laughs> <laughs> he's a big dude. He's a big man. Yes. And, and plus he got he had so much momentum. Yes. Running like he was just running yes, downhill yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. But that haunts you a little bit. Oh, it definitely does. It definitely does. Yeah. Uh, when you're trying to assess greatness with these younger players, you know, you've been playing 14 years, which I still find amazing because I, I you know, it's like you led the league in receptions this year. Yes, sir. How the hell do you do that at your age when you see all these young <laughs> guys that Antonio Brown or Beckham or I mean, what what is it? What is the secret there to do it at 13 years in the league? as opposed to three years in the league. Well, you just got to be a professional, Dan. You got to come to work every day and be passionate about what you're doing. Um, and, and the combination of that and, and also having a court, elite quarterback in Carson Palmer and having a head coach that is, uh, I believe, the best play caller offensively in the National Football League in terms of the way he designs plays, features guys, get guys involved. Um, it, it's not that difficult, especially the way we pass the football in the National Football League. Passing records and receptions and yards, you're going to see it continue to rise because the football is being thrown at a historic rate. But I'm looking at the numbers here for you. You got 14,000 yards. You got 1,100 receptions. Do you think in 10 years from now we're going to look back at those numbers and say, "Oh, that's all you got"? I, I, I mean, you think you think back when uh, when 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 Jerry Rice finished his season or, or finished his career or. Or even go back a little bit further when, when Art Monk finished. You know, he finished his career as the leading uh, pass catcher yeah. in, in history. I think it was in, in the high 900s. 
And, you know, people were talking, but that, that would never be touched. That, that number would never be touched. And now you, you look at it and you say, I mean, Brandon Marshall will break 1,000 catches next year. Antonio uh, Brown is coming up very quickly. You have some prolific pass catchers, and they're catching 100 balls every single year uh, when that wasn't the norm, you know, back in the day. Um, so a lot of numbers are going to fall quickly. I mean, Drew Brees in two years will, will pass Peyton Manning over 71,000. Like, that, that is incomprehensible to think of somebody being able to throw it that much and that effectively um and i think a lot of those numbers will, will be uh will, will come but down. it makes it harder to assess who's a hall of famer yeah i do if you if you predicate it solely on numbers but it, you have to look at the impact that the player made when they play like calvin johnson to me is 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 without a doubt a hall of famer because he was the best player in his era um he walked away a, a little early at nine years but when he was on the field there was nobody better He's Larry Fitzgerald joining us uh, now. He dressed clean today. The Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year Award presented by uh, Nationwide. Do you want to talk about this, what it means to you? Well, this is the second time as a finalist. And I, I to me personally, feel this is uh, the highest honor you can receive in the National Football League because it exemplifies what I believe is, is, is what's right. You know, not enough attention is paid to the guys who are doing good things in their communities and making a positive impact on their youth. You know, a lot of attention is always paid to the guys who unfortunately make mistakes and most of the National Football League are guys like Eli Manning and like Greg Olson who represent themselves in the most positive light and uh, I think it's great that Walter Payton's legacy is being honored. Yeah it's a cool thing and, and you're right we, we, we focus on those that are asking for attention and it's not necessarily those that get in trouble but you know the receivers you guys are divas <laughs> but you get lumped in there. <laughs> No. Like, what's your diva moment that you had in your 14-year career, Larry? Like one that your dad may have scolded you. No, I've never had any of those where he would scold me. No, I, 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 I never, I never really. I'm a bit shy in terms of that. Like, I'm, I'm not a guy who really seeks attention like that. I'm very comfortable just being in the background. I just want to do my job, you know, make sure I'm making my impact and making my plays. But it's not because I want to do it for any other reason. Like, I don't, I don't want to be on sports center and get attention or like that's not what it's about to me you've been fined before yes yeah i've been fined before for uniform infractions <laughs> ne never 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 for celebration but but did you make a mistake or did you do something on purpose as far as your uniform violation um my socks were a little lower than standard <laughs> yes yeah the, the sock has to come mid-calf and my sock was a little bit lower than mid-calf and they the nfl felt like they, need, they needed to let me know that that was not right how much they find you? Uh, 6,500. 6, yeah. That's a lot of socks. You don't even, see, they took away that money. You couldn't afford socks no, I, today. No, Look, I, I, you don't even I'm have saying. socks I, on. Times are tough out here. Wow. Times are tough out here. Damn. Yeah. Wow. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. Um, so Carson Palmer is coming back? I have no idea. I, I've not oh, talked. Oh, Larry. No, listen, when I, I talked to Carson two days ago, and we, we did not talk about any. This is before I even made my announcement I was coming back. We didn't talk one thing about football, house house skiing in, uh, in Idaho and you know we talked about you know family how the kids doing you know things of that nature no, nothing about any football. OK. How would you feel if he doesn't come back. I'll be sad. I'll be sad. I think everybody will be sad on Sundays. Uh, you'll be really sad uh, th even throughout the course of the day because we really enjoy being around him as a man. Um, you know he's, he's a really fantastic teammate and a, and a good friend and um, it, it would be sad because. You know, I wouldn't be able to see him every day, but also he's one of the best quarterbacks in the National Football League. Wait, you have to at least hint at that topic when you talk to him. Just say, hey, by the way, uh, just letting everybody know I haven't said anything publicly, um, you know, that I'm, I'm going to come back. Dan, you know, you know, you know how it is when, when somebody is at that point in their career where they're contemplating retirement. It, it's, it's something that you don't want to get involved with because it's not. It's something very personal, you know, when, when you're at that point in your career. So I, I don't think it would be right for us to interject our opinions and in, in, in what he's doing. Your dad is a member of the media. Yeah. How did he prepare you for the media? You know, I wouldn't say he did anything to, per se, prepare me, but when he would bring me around. So I would be in the locker room when he was giving an interview to say the Cleveland Indians and Albert Bell was going off on one of his tirades. And I say, I don't want to, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to do that right there. That's probably not what I want to do. But then, uh, you know, I, I will see him interviewing, say, Bernie Williams after a game. And I say, that right there, that, that's somebody I, I would like to model myself after. And it, you know, as a 7, 8, 9, 10-year-old kid, yeah. you, know, you, you can see that. You can see the difference and, and uh, you know, see Bernie Williams come after a game and he's in a, in a, in a suit, you know, very professional, business-like. And, you know, things like that you, you always remember.
That's pretty cool, though, yeah. that your dad brought you around to yeah. give you those moments there. Yeah, and I had the best childhood ever. So I was a Vikings ball boy, so I was right there with Chris Carter and Randy Moss for practices and saw the, the heated competition they were in. I got to go and, and be a shooting around with Kevin Garnett and, and, uh, and, and Wally Zerbiak and guys like that. And then I would get to go to Twins games, and I'd get to catch fly balls in the outfield with Kirby Puckett. Like, you, you, you couldn't imagine, you know, how lucky it was. And, and see Mike Madonna during skate around when he was playing for the Minnesota North Stars. Look at uh, you. Look at you. You know, you. like, it, it, it was just a really, really fun, fun childhood. And my dad, this is before all the security and all this stuff. Yeah. My dad would just sneak me into the back of the Metrodome through the media entrance, and he'd say, I see you. In, I see you in the seventh inning. You come down. I give you a hot dog and a coke, and you find the find the seat. So we start off in the Raptors. We start off way up in the Raptors, up in the top. By the end of the game, we'll be right behind home plate. You know, it was it was the best. It was. <laughs> uh, congrats, the uh, finalist for the Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year. NFL.com slash Man of the Year. To learn more about this, uh, you can go there. And uh, Nationwide has donated uh, nearly eight hundred thousand dollars over the past three seasons to various causes represented by. The nominees. He's coming back for one more. It's only it's one and done. No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm coming back for this season. Though. One more year. Yes. Sir. <laughs> Unless you, if, if you win the Super Bowl, then you're done. Oh, for sure. I'm okay. out of here. I'm out of here. <laughs> All right. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.